Colby Covington of the UFC, Jake and Logan Paul are little Disney stars and not real fighters. Jake Paul had vowed to establish himself as one of boxing's leading figures. Colby Covington of the UFC might concur, but he claims it isn't due to Paul's skill in the ring. Jake Paul and his brother Logan Paul, who gained popularity by uploading videos to YouTube and Vine before becoming prominent figures in combat sports, were singled out by Covington. They're all the rage, not for the right reasons. They're not real fighters. They can't win real fights against tough fighters. They're little circus sideshows, Covington told OutKick. They're fighting in these little unsanctioned fights and fighting against guys that aren't relevant, guys that are 50 years old, guys that are 50 pounds bigger than them. Why aren't they fighting against guys in their own weight class? The WWE superstar Logan will meet MMA fighter Dylan Donnies in Manchester in October, marking his first comeback to the boxing ring in four years. After defeating former UFC fighter Nate Diaz on Saturday, Jake improved to 7-1 in his professional career. However, Covington claims that he could easily defeat either of them if he had to. Of course I'd fight them. It'd be an easy fight. They're little Disney stars. I'd break them in half, Covington said. If I dropped MAGA bombs on them for one punch, they'd run away crying to their mom. They'd be looking for a safe space. But I'm in the UFC. I'm a company man. I love the UFC, so I only want to fight the biggest and best fights the UFC has to offer. I don't want to fight these little Disney, Lizzie McGuire, stars. For two seasons, Jake played the lead role in Bizarre Vark on the Disney Channel. Additionally, Covington won the Fight of the Night award twice and was a former UFC welterweight champion. 15 fraud-related charges against an ex-NFL cornerback, totaling more than $100. Oh 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 after, arrested, in, Canada. After being detained in Canada on Wednesday, Buster Scrine is now facing more than a dozen fraud-related accusations. Police claim that the former New York Jets defensive back stole more than $100,000. The Durham Regional Police Department says Scrine was attending numerous financial institutions where he would identify himself as a retired NFL player. He would open bank accounts with fraudulent checks and obtain a portion of the money prior to the check clearing. According to the authorities, Scrine has allegedly been committing similar offenses across Canada. Just west of Toronto in Mississauga, Ontario, Pearson International Airport is where Scrine was detained. DRPS fraud investigators worked in conjunction with Homeland Security Investigations, U.S. Customs and Border Protection as well as Peel Regional Police, to jail him prior to his trip back to the United States. Durham Police said. In total, Sarkine is up for 15 counts. He is accused of making false representations to get money on seven charges, including four counts of fraud involving over $5,000. Three charges of property gained through criminal activity exceeding $5,000 and one count of property obtained through criminal activity under $5,000. Scrine was held for a bail hearing. Scrine, 34, was selected by the Cleveland Browns in the fifth round of the 2011 NFL Draft. He spent his first four NFL seasons with the Browns. He next inked a four-year contract with the New York Jets, played for the Tennessee Titans and San Francisco 49ers in 2021, and then spent two seasons with the Chicago Bears. He announced his retirement from the NFL in July 2022. NASCAR drivers get in heated brawl after race escalates tensions with spin-out. 
At the Lucas Oil Indianapolis Raceway Park on Friday night, Christian Rose and Connor Jones were competing in the Aka Menard series, and things got heated. With roughly 16 laps remaining, Rose turned around as Jones and another runner went side by side. The video playback demonstrated that Rose lost control after being touched by Jones, spinning into the wall. Rose placed 10th overall, while Jones took 6th. The television cameras went over to Rose addressing Jones as Jesse Love celebrated the victory. Rose had to be restrained from continuing the altercation after being pulled away by a member of Jones' squad. A video that was uploaded on X showed an animated Rose confronting Jones as soon as he got out of his car. At one point, Rose smacked Jones' hand, which is when the teammate intervened. One of Rose's squad members warned his driver, that's F enough. Since 2021, 17-year-old Jones has competed in the Aka series. Rose, who is 28 years old, began competing professionally in 2018. Rose started the race in 4th place, while Jones started in 14th place at IRP. Love persevered to earn his 8th triumph of the year. LeVar Scott, William Sawalich, Sean Hingarani, and Luke Fenhaus made up the top 5. David Montgomery of the Lions and his girlfriend are being sued for an alleged pit bull attack. Due to his pet, one of the newest Detroit Lions players has gotten himself into some trouble. A civil complaint has been filed against David Montgomery and his girlfriend after it was claimed that their pit bull assaulted the dog of another couple earlier this year. According to the lawsuit, the pit bull also bit the dog's owner. The Michigan Department of Public Safety in Gross Point Shores received the lawsuit last month. Mark and Dana Owens claim that when they were walking their dog, a pit bull bit and hung onto their cockapoo's leg, causing two leg fractures, stitches, and finally an amputation of the limb. According to reports, the dog walker's left hand had two puncture wounds. Montgomery reportedly stated that the problem is getting taken care of, according to the Detroit Free Press. Tatum Kazi, Montgomery's girlfriend, received a ticket for keeping a dangerous animal. Kazi said that her pit bull grabbed the dog's arm when it saw another dog after escaping its fence. Owens called the incident, absolutely the most horrific experience of my life, saying he had to undergo surgery for nerve damage. After spending the first four years of his career with the Chicago Bears, 26-year-old Montgomery signed a three-year contract with the Detroit Lions this summer. Jamer Gibbs, who Detroit chose with the 12th overall choice in the NFL draft, and Montgomery appear to be working as a committee. With the Windy City, he rushed for 3,609 yards. Neymar arrives in Saudi Arabia on almost empty jet after PSG departure. After agreeing to a transfer from French club Paris Saint-Germain to the Saudi Pro League, Neymar has landed in Saudi Arabia. After leaving PSG to join Al-Halal, the forward arrived at King Khalid International Airport in Riyadh. He was captured on camera taking out from Paris on a massive, mostly empty jumbo plane and coming into the Middle Eastern country. The 31-year-old left for the strict Islamic nation sporting a cream tracksuit and a giant diamond-encrusted crucifix. Neymar joined the list of famous athletes who have left Europe for the obscenely lucrative Arabian League earlier this month when he signed an £86.3 million contract to play in the Saudi Pro League. He was welcomed by his guests and handed a bunch of flowers as he wrapped an Al-Halal scarf around his shoulders. As he moved through the airport, 
he spent some time signing autographs for admirers. According to Sky Sports News, the Brazilian will make £129.2 million a year in Saudi Arabia, which is six times what he made at PSG. Football talents that have moved to the Saudi Pro League include Cristiano Ronaldo, Karim Benzema, Jordan Henderson, and Sadio Mane. I believe Cristiano Ronaldo started all of this and everybody called him, crazy, and this and that. Today you see the league grow more and more, Neymar said in his first interview after the transfer on Wednesday. It is exciting, meeting top quality players on the other teams thrills you and motivates you to play even better. And it is a given when you face Ronaldo, Benzema, Roberto, Firmino, that the excitement is even greater," he added. While playing for PSG in France, Neymar won five league championships, but despite reaching the Champions League final in 2019-2020, he was unable to bring the tournament to Paris. With Barcelona, he previously won the Champions League in 2014-2015. Neymar's new club, Al Halal, is one of four Saudi clubs to have been effectively nationalized by the state-run public investment fund, PIF, which claims assets of about £550 billion. PIF is chaired by the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, whose ambitions in global sports have become a signature policy. Spanish FA president apologizes for kissing soccer player on lips. Luis Rubiales, head of the Spanish Football Federation, apologized after receiving criticism for kissing Jenny Hermoso during the Women's World Cup ceremony. On Sunday, Spain defeated England 1-0 to win the World Cup for the first time in history. Olga Carmona's goal came in the 29th minute. Many people winced when they saw Rubiales kiss Hermoso on the lips and cover her head while they were on stage for the awarding of medals and trophies. He also added fuel to the vitriol fire when he called critics, idiots. I made a mistake, for sure, Rubiales said about the kiss and his reaction, per ESPN. I have to accept it. In a moment of such emotion, without any bad intention or bad faith, what happened, happened, in a very spontaneous way. There was no bad faith from either side. Hermoso said after the ceremony, yeah, I did not enjoy that, per the Telegraph. However, she downplayed that comment later, telling Kadena Cope that the gesture from Rubiales was, no big deal. It was a mutual, totally spontaneous gesture because of the huge joy of winning a World Cup, she said. The Prezi and I have a great relationship. His behavior with us has been a 10. It was a natural gesture of affection and gratitude. We've won a World Cup, and we won't get away from what's important. We saw it as something natural and normal. But on the outside it has caused a stir, because people have felt hurt by it, so I have to apologize. There's no alternative," Rubiales explained. Social media saw outrage over the situation. The FA president does this on the biggest stage of the sport with royalty and officials near him, surrounded by cameras. Very disturbing, and frankly, concerning, one user on X posted. The Spanish equality minister Irene Montero also commented on social media. Let's not assume that giving a kiss without consent is something that happens, she wrote. It is a form of sexual violence that women suffer on a daily basis and until now invisible, and that we cannot normalize. Tommy Sweeney of the Giants is stable after collapsing due to a medical event on the practice field, team says. When tight end Tommy Sweeney passed out halfway through practice on Wednesday, 
the New York Giants had a terrifying moment. Before the Giants' tight end was ultimately taken off the practice field, coaches and doctors checked on him. The 28-year-old status was later described as stable by the Giants. The incident was described by team representatives as a medical event, and they added that Sweeney was under the care of medical professionals in the Giants' athletic training room. Giants quarterback Daniel Jones said seeing Sweeney down and needing medical attention was extremely scary. You never want to see that on the field, Jones said. The Buffalo Bills selected Sweeney in the seventh round of the 2019 NFL Draft. He was listed as physically unable to perform PUP in July 2020 due to a foot injury. In October 2020, he switched to the reserve or COVID-19 list before ultimately going back to the PUP list after being diagnosed with myocarditis. Sweeney was given the all-clear to start playing again the following offseason and played in 18 games with the Bills in 2021 and 2022, including three starts, before signing with the Giants in free agency in March. He's reconnected with Giants coach Brian Dabble in New York. Before taking over as head coach of the Giants, Dabble served as the offensive coordinator for the Bills. It was not immediately clear whether there's a connection between Sweeney's health history and Wednesday's episode. Ryan Blaney crashes hard into the wall. NASCAR's Coke Zero Sugar 400 features a massive wreck. On Saturday night, during the NASCAR Cup Series Coke Zero Sugar 400, the big one happened at Daytona International Speedway. After the second stage, as the group moved into the front stretch, Christopher Bell seemed to give Ty Gibbs a slight prod. Gibbs became erratic and out of control, killing Ryan Blaney in the process. When Blaney hit the wall head-on, several other cars were entangled in the wreckage. On the NBC broadcast, an in-car camera made clear how severe the collision was. Three drivers were engaged in the one pocket of the collision, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Alex Bowman, and A.J. Almendinger. To get away from what was in front of them, several cars hooked up with one another. Riley Herbst, Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Chris Buescher, Austin Sindrick, Austin Dillon, and Harrison Burton were all involved. The collision involved 16 automobiles in all. As the cleanup team took care of the track, a red flag was raised. The red flag was raised during lap 96 of the race. Blaney declared himself, OK, and was allowed to leave the infield care facility. Brad Keselowski was able to emerge unhurt from the collision and take the Stage 2 victory. The first stage was won by Martin Truex Jr. Third place went to Daniel Suarez, who is vying for the last playoff slot. To move up to the last slot, he needs to win. Additionally, Bubba Wallace was a contender. He would enter the playoffs provided there was no new winner in the race. Dodgers starting pitcher Julio Uriash is accused with felony domestic violence. Starting pitcher Julio Uriash for the Los Angeles Dodgers was detained late on Sunday night and charged with felony domestic abuse, according to Los Angeles Police and ESPN. Uriash has been arrested twice for domestic abuse in the last four years. Having been detained at around 11 p.m., the 27-year-old was booked into jail around 1 a.m., according to jail records. Uriash has a court date on September 27 and was freed on a $50,000 bail. We are aware of an incident involving Julio Urias, the Dodgers said in a statement. While we attempt to learn all the facts, he will not be traveling with the team. The organization has no further comment at this time. 
Additionally, MLB informed ESPN that it was looking into Uriash's case. The league frequently places a player accused of domestic abuse on administrative leave while investigating the incident. In 2019, after Uriash was detained on allegations of domestic assault, MLB handled Uriash in this manner. Although he wasn't charged, MLB intervened and issued a 20-game suspension by its domestic violence policy. No MLB player has ever received a second suspension for breaking the rules. The left-hander, who was born in Mexico, has made 21 starts for the Dodgers in 2023 and has a 4.60 era. However, in 2022, he had the top era in the league with a 2.16 across 31 starts and 175 innings. With 158 games, 122 starts, and 117.1 innings pitched over his career. Uriash has a 3.11 era and a regular season record of 60-25. After this year, Uriash will be a free agent. Hulk Hogan reveals weight loss after break from booze, it changed everything. Former WWE superstar Hulk Hogan recently revealed that quitting alcohol eight months ago changed everything, as he shed 18 kg. Hogan, 70, claimed that his last drink was on New Year's Eve and that he had planned to take a brief break from drinking, but he hasn't had a drop since. He told TMZ, I wasn't eating late at night, I wasn't eating junk food anymore. I dropped like 40 pounds right away. One of the most recognizable wrestlers of all time, Hogan, claimed that his regular alcohol consumption started during his professional career. We'd have beers before the matches. Beers after the matches. And we'd go to the hotel and all meet down at the bar. It was kinda like part of the whole wrestling genre, he told the US outlet. Hogan did remark, though, that he was not giving up alcohol for good and promised to take it easy than when he was younger if he did start drinking again despite the eight months without alcohol. I would never drink daily. You know, like I did when I was wrestling, he told TMZ. In the past, Hogan has caused controversy and been fired from the WWE Hall of Fame for remarks he made about his daughter Brooke's ex-boyfriend on tapes taken in 2007. After being out of the Hall of Fame for three years, he was later readmitted. After meeting his childhood idol Derek Jeter, Brewer's shortstop doesn't hold back excitement. Babe Ruth used to attend the New York Yankees Old Timers Day, celebrated on Saturday and the 75th annual event. But the newer generation of Yankees supporters witnessed Derek Jeter, one of their boyhood idols, for the first time as an old timer in the Bronx. The celebration is one of the Yankees' greatest traditions, and fans frequently arrive as if it were a playoff game to honor their former favorite players. However, the opponents also celebrate Old Timers Day. Before today's Yankees game against the Milwaukee Brewers, there was a celebration, and when Brewers shortstop Willie Adames saw Jeter, he had to take advantage of the occasion. After the ceremony, a few Brewers players went in search of the veterans, but Adames immediately hurried to Jeter who served as the Yankees shortstop for 20 years. After a brief exchange of words, the two parted ways, and Adames acted like a young child. Adames returned to the dugout while grinning ear to ear and hugging one of his coaches. Adames had served as the shortstop for the Tampa Bay Rays, an AL East opponent of the Yankees. Hence, Maybe Adames felt a little more at ease approaching Jeter now that Jeter competes in the NL East. The former Yankee skipper received by far the greatest applause during his inaugural Old Timers Day performance. And deservedly so, 
given that Jeter retired with 3,465 hits, which ranks 6th in MLB history, was a 14-time All-Star, a 5-time World Series winner, and a 14-time All-Star. He wore the navy blue pinstripes throughout the entirety of his 20-year career. The 1998 Yankees, who finished 1-14-58 in the regular season and won the World Series, were also honored during the ceremony. They still hold the record for the most victories by a team in a single season with 125, and Jeter came in third that year in the AL MVP voting. The Yankees of today, though, are very different from those of 25 years ago. Since many of the Old Timers Day honorees have only just begun their professional careers, the 2018 Yankees are in danger of falling below .500. The Bronx Bombers, who were 70-71 as of Saturday, were last below .500 in 1992. A Danes even went deep against the Yankees on Friday fan, attacked and gang-raped, in France during Rugby World Cup. The first weekend of the Rugby World Cup reportedly saw a gang rape of an Ireland supporter in Bordeaux, according to claims in French media. About the attack, police are hunting for three males. According to media accounts, the woman was later discovered on the street by a group of Welsh fans who reportedly assisted her in returning to her lodging. According to reports, the alleged incident happened near where she lived in the Saint-Pierre neighborhood. According to a police complaint cited by Le Parisian, three people kidnapped her and took her to Rue du Puits de Scazo. A spokesperson for Irish police told they are liaising with local authorities in France. Members of Angarda Sachana currently deployed in France for the duration of the Rugby World Cup tournament to assist Irish people visiting France are liaising with local authorities in relation to an alleged incident, the spokesperson said. The investigation is a matter for French police. And Garda Sachana has no further comment at this time. According to France's police, some 600,000 rugby fans from other countries are anticipated to go there during the competition in the upcoming weeks. Swift helps Kelsey, Eagles stay undefeated with victory over Bucks. On Monday night, a Swift assisted a Kelsey in winning a game for a group of players wearing white and green who weren't affiliated with the defending Super Bowl champs. The Philadelphia Eagles defeated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 25-11, to maintain their perfect record. Perhaps it was just good karma. For the second game running, DeAndre Swift surpassed 100 yards. Swift eluded potential tacklers and gained 130 yards on the ground. Despite throwing two interceptions, Jalen Hurts contributed 277 passing yards on 23 of 37 attempts and a touchdown pass to the passing offense. Hurts started throwing to his top receiver this week after a contentious exchange with A.J. Brown the previous week. Brown caught nine of his 14 targets. His total was 131 yards. Alamade Zacchaeus hauled in two passes for a total of 58 yards. His reception resulted in a touchdown. Despite Jason Kelsey and the line seeing red the whole game, they generally managed to contain the Buccaneers' defense. Hertz received one dismissal. During the game, Tampa Bay also recorded four tackles for a loss. Tampa Bay was unable to overcome the defense despite Baker Mayfield's late touchdown throw to Mike Evans. Mayfield threw an interception while being twice sacked. He completed 15 of 25 passes for 146 yards. Despite having 38 yards on the ground, Richard White fumbled once. Evans had the most receptions on the team with 5 for 60 yards.
The Eagles are now 3-0 on the year and appear to be on par with if not superior to the team from 2022. Before falling to the Washington Commanders, Philadelphia won their first eight games of the previous season. Eventually, the Eagles made it to the Super Bowl, where they were defeated by the Chiefs. Even their 2-0 start surprised everyone about the Buccaneers. Despite their loss, they still lead the NFC South after three weeks. Both the New Orleans Saints and the Atlanta Falcons are 2-0. NFL hopeful seems to have missed the DeAndre Hopkins competition. DeAndre Hopkins is still in the running for the championship as he looks for his next NFL team as a free agency wide receiver. Although there is one club that meets the mold and appears to be out on the pro bowler, Hopkins stated that he is looking for a strong organization with a decent quarterback he can gel with heading into the postseason. After completing a blockbuster deal with the Green Bay Packers, the New York Jets now have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. After missing the playoffs for the previous 12 seasons, the move positions them as a genuine contender. On Wednesday, though, head coach Robert Sala brushed off a query regarding Hopkins possibly joining the squad. We love our current group, Sala said about the team's receivers. I know there was some stuff with Odell, Beckham Jr., but other than that, we love our group. Although the Jets were in the running to acquire Beckham, he ultimately decided to accept a one-year deal with the Baltimore Ravens to play with Lamar Jackson. Keeping intentions a secret in professional sports often involves some gamesmanship, but taking Sala at his word seems reasonable in light of the Jets' receiving group. First, Despite uncertainty at the quarterback situation between Zach Wilson, Mike White, and Joe Flacco last season, Garrett Wilson was named Offensive Rookie of the Year. He is anticipated to flourish now that Rodgers is in charge of the offense. Alan Lazard has also been added, and the two of them were teammates in Green Bay. Despite the Rodgers contract not having been finalized yet this summer, he signed with the Jets. Even Randall Cobb, a former Packers target for Rodgers, joined one Jets drive as a free agent. Nicole Hardman, who is anticipated to be a deep ball threat and someone Rodgers can get the ball out too quickly for a possible large gain with his lightning speed, was also recruited by GM Joe Douglas. The Jets must be confident in their prospects with this position group given the addition of veterans Corey Davis and Denzel Mims. Hopkins is a consistent number one receiver in the NFL, so fully ruling out the possibility of bringing him in would be negligent. The Jets have the cap space to sign Hopkins because, according to OverTheCap.com, they currently have a $24 million surplus. Due to their reputations as some of the best teams in the NFL, particularly when it comes to quarterback performance, clubs like the Kansas City Chiefs, Buffalo Bills, and Philadelphia Eagles are among the favorites to sign the guy they name, Nook, on the football field. But the Jets appear to be happy with the team they have in the building at the moment. The organization's first focus appears to be getting everyone on the same page under new offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett, who Rodgers once played under in Green Bay.